Welcome back, friends, to another The City of Final Fantasy Opera Omni video. Lids87 here, and I am bringing you guys another Are They Worth It video to see if units on said banner are worth your precious tickets and or gems. Before I get into it, though, friends, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I'm still, if you guys hear an echo, I'm still working on my room. I'm still waiting on my, uh, I'm getting some, uh, pet, some noise reduction echo pads panels that i'm supposed to put up and hopefully reduce the echo in the room so i do apologize in advance for that please bear with me until those things do arrive now on august 12th utc time we will be getting a heretic quest event and we will be getting uh new new banners wonderful banners and we're going to be getting a new burst banner lsa will be getting a rework now that burst unit is going to be the one and only shantoto now uh per like the last LD and burst banner squall the same concept is gonna be here there's gonna be two banners both of them will have Shantota's LD and burst weapons so here we have Aiko we have our uh, upper left hand corner we have Aiko we have Shantota with the EX LSA I'm, I actually like that one and we'll talk about that later on the bottom right one we have Porum Kral and Lulu so you you do have your options and of course Shantota will be repeated her burst, at least, will be on to other banners, which we will talk about a little bit later in this video. All right, now the very first person we are going to be talking about is Alice, and gosh damn, her kit, guys, man, if you're not used to her kit, whew, it's complicated. I was reading, I was like, what the f Um, anywho, so, pros. Let's talk about pros about Alice, because she will be getting a rework, and she will be getting her EX+. Plus. Now, first and foremost, if you happen to know her kit right off the top of your head, you're freaking genius. I, I don't know what to tell you because there's like different tiers of her elements and their stacks and all this wonderful stuff. You're a freaking genius. All right, pat yourself on the back. Go get your PhD. Second, another big pro about her is there is no, she, in her abilities, in her Vera Stone, Vera Fire, which is consider that as her tier two, in her EX ability, there, there is no increase to turn count with her EX ability. There's no action delay. So we all love units that have free turns built into their kit. It's going to help out with you know the harder content and strict uh, turn requirements now vera stone and vera fire grant dual cast for one turn what dual cast does for lsa this will grant her a free ability use while dual cast is active at ex plus zero out of three she can imperil all of her elements so that's fire wind thunder and stone there is a vera holy built into her kit but it's not elemental so keep that in mind so she has four elements attached to her kit and truthfully she seems very fun to use it, but if you happen to master her kit, if you know the ins and outs of it, it looks really fun to use. I don't know. I don't have her on the JP side of the game. I don't have her on Globe. I didn't get her EX. So I would be okay if I got it here. She seems fun to use. Now, there are some things I, I did want to mention because she is she is repeating, okay? But she's getting rework in EX+. Plus. Now, essentially, I want to do some quick mechanics stuff to talk about in her kit to hopefully help you understand. Now, first and foremost, I'm not a pro with her, all right? I need to get my PhD. I'm, I'm a noob with her, so this was based off of reading reading her kit, okay? So she has a stacking mechanic in the form of white and black mana. Using her abilities will grant her stacks of white or black mana, depending on which one her use, and her brave attack plus will give her one stack of both of them, one stack of black and one stack of white mana. At five stacks, her HP attack will become enchanted redoublement now if you do happen to be at one stack of white and black mana you get enchanted repose but i don't recommend you use that one wait until she is at five stacks of white and black mana to get her enchanted doublement because this will turn both of her abilities her bear her vera arrow and vera thunder into essentially their strongest form vera holy and vera flare now what Vera Holy and Vera Flare, they are, again, her strongest forms of her abilities, and they will grant her four stacks of either white or black mana, depending on which one you use. Now, the best way to think of her abilities is think of them as tiers, okay? So, tier one would be her Vera Arrow and Vera Thunder, which I <laughs> have my side notes, I'm like, ah! Vera Arrow and Vera Thunder, her tier two would be her Vera Stone and Vera Fire, and her tier two abilities will grant her access to her dual cast, which gives her free ability use on the following turn. Now, in order to get to tier two, you have to use the tier one abilities once. So if you use Vera Arrow once, that will upgrade to its tier two form, Vera Stone. Now, 
the tier three that is accessible when you use Enchanted Redoublement. When her you're at five stacks of black and white mana, and her HP attack upgrades to Enchanted Redoublement, and that's pretty much the gist of it. You got a bounce between all those wonderful things. I will, I will leave a link down below in the in the description. It is by the Toneberry Troop in regards to how to use her. Her kit or turn order, all that wonderful stuff. I'm not the person to ask about that, so I will leave that infographic down below in the description. Be sure to grab that thing. But again, that is the gist of her abilities. Get her stacks up. Use Enchanted Redoublement. Uh, use her Vera Holy. I'm sorry, Varus, Varus Stone and Vera Fire to get dual cast. Now, one quick thing to note, I actually did forget to mention. If you use her tier three of her abilities, Vera Holy and Vera Flare. After you use that, they will downgrade back to the, their tier two. So that means you could use a tier two, tier two, and get dual cast for the free abilities on the following turn. So they all pretty much downgrade after you use them. So if you happen to use tier two, that will downgrade back to tier one. If you use tier three, it'll go to tier two and tier one. So on and so forth. All right, friends. Hopefully, I didn't use you. That was my quick, supposedly mechanics breakdown. All right, friends. If you're a pro. Please help out other people in the comments. I will leave that thing in the description, the infographic from the Tone Barrier Tube. If I get her, I'll try to master her the best I can. But all right, we'll go from there, friends. Hopefully that helped out somewhat. Think of it as tears and you will do fine. Now, EX Plus recommendation. When the quest starts, this will turn Verero and Ver Thunder to their tier two forms. So tier one into tier two, she gets dual cast right off the bat if you use her tier 2 abilities and her EX gauge is filled to the max so you want to use her EX ability into either either of her tier 2 abilities followed by the the free ability turn the free ability used on the following turn her EX gauge should be filled again you can do wonderful things with her infographic down below in the description thank you toneberry 2 for putting that thing together it's wonderful now that's where i recommend her is EX plus 2 out of 3 like, that's where she gets all that wonderful stuff at EX plus 0 out of 3 I apologize, I didn't put the number on here, but it's e it's EX plus two out of three, at least, at least, at least four. One of the other noteworthy things that I noticed is that zero, at EX plus zero out of three, when you realize her EX weapon is, she can imperil all her elements, fire, thunder, wind, and earth, which is going to help out deal, dish out that much more damage, because she, she has four elements attached to her kit, and you want her to dish out as much damage as you can, and being able to do that with her EX ability and imperil her own elements, it's going to make her that much more useful. Her Brave Attack upgrades to its Brave Attack Plus, which this will grant one stack of white and black mana. And this is where she gets the in, her HP attack upgraded to either Enchanted Repose or Enchanted Redoublement. So if you happen to be between one to five uh, stacks of white mana or black mana, that's when she gets her Enchanted Repose. If you are at five stacks of white or black mana, she gets Enchanted Redoublement, which then if you use Enchanted Redoublement, that's when she gets her Bear Holy and Bear Flare. So try to use Enchanted Redoublement because, again, you want the most powerful versions of her forms, her Tier 3. I uh, Enchanted Repose, I don't know. I really don't see much use for it. Just use Enchanted Re Redoublement and you're going to be fine. So again, friends, EX Plus recommendation. EX Plus, 2 out of 3. At least, at least, at least. But at that point, just go to 3 out of 3. Some cons about LSA is that it can be very easy to get lost with her kit. You guys saw if you're not very familiar if you if, if you're not familiar with her if you lo lose track of her stacks i mean the counter is above her head if you lose track of what does what it, it could get confusing so this could potentially turn away some some of the new newer players or those players that don't like complicated kits but once you get familiar with it it's it's not a pain and another con is that she does have forward types of elements attached to her kit so if one of them is absorbed you, that one ability or one tier of an ability is locked out, so to say. I mean, you can still use the rest of her abilities, but again, one of her abilities will be locked out, but in, keep in mind that she can imperil her own elements. So with her other abilities, she'll be fine, but just keep that in mind. Four types of elements attached to her kit. This could potentially lock her out depending on the, en on the enemy and the elemental resistances. All right, friends. Good luck. The main unit on this banner, the main unit getting an LD and burst. It's time to talk about Shantoto. Quick recap as we have had her before. She's had a rework before. She's coming here, LD and burst. So Shantoto is a magic attack with debuffs built into her kit. A curse gaze, which she inflicts with arrow, uh, rage arrow. Poison, which she inflicts with bio, rage bio. And divine malison, which she inflicts with her EX ability or her rage divine malison. She is the elemental and paralleler queen with divine malison. She at EX plus zero out of three, you have to be EX plus zero out of three. She can in, uh, imperil every single element 
in the game so she can pair very nicely with your elemental team. Now we're starting to see a lot of these elemental units. They can imperil their own elements, but if they can't, pair them up with Shantoto and they're, they're going to excel. And another thing about Shantoto is that when she's pissed off, she goes into her rage form. Now, while she's enraged, her abilities hit harder. All right, Hulk smash, all that wonderful stuff. When the quest starts, she is in her rage form and using her HP, her HP attack, brave attack, her upgrade, brave attack, HP attack, she can extend rage by a few turns, which is nice. Now with Shantota's crystal 50 passive is that she can survive a lethal hit. So if her HP is above 50% and she takes lethal, she will survive. Now if her HP drops below 50%, she will not lose rage. She will be permanently enraged for the remainder of the stage. Now if you see a big HP attack coming towards Shantota, take advantage of that C50 so you can be enraged for the remainder of the stage and just all of her abilities will be in their rage. Form. Now with Shantoto's LD ability, the main gist of it is that her LD ability, she brings out a giant scythe, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, she can inflict Ruin's Curse to all enemies for one turn. Now what uh, Ruin's Curse does, this will lower all the enemy's defense by 100% and inflict paralysis for one turn. This is going to be very, very handy because you there are some Lufenia bosses down the line that either require them to be paralyzed or you need to prevent them from doing an HP attack in one form or another. One of those is in Camelonauts Lufenia and one of them is in Clouds, uh, I believe it was Heretics, I can't remember exactly, it, or, or Raids, and that was in Clouds Lufenia there, the, the Guard Scorpions, you needed to paralyze them so Shantota could come in handy there, or Raijin. Or you could bring Shantoto to Camelonauts uh, Lufenia where they, there's like two little dragons that you have to stop them from attacking in order to reset their or increase their Lufenia orb turn count. Because if those of you familiar or not familiar, once that Lufenia orb count reaches zero, which is a new mechanic that we that will be introduced into the game, pretty much your party will die. There's a good chance your party will die. All right, friends, so keep that in mind. Main gist of it, defense down 100%, inflicts paralysis. You will also... Uh, she will, if you happen to lose rage, use her LD ability. She'll grant herself rage for a few turns and her any of her upgraded uh, HP attacks turn into rage HP attack for four turns after use, which is, it just dishes out that much more damage. Now, of course, receiving an LD ability, she does get a burst weapon and the burst effect is this will raise the elemental weakness damage by a lot. This will raise the maximum brave damage limit plus 20% and moderately raise max brave overflow, stolen max brave overflow. So, true to her kit, true to her being the elemental imperiler queen with the burst effect after the uh, the finished burst triggers, after you go through the whole burst mode, you will be dishing out you, you will be dishing out more damage if you happen to elemental weakness. That's 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 okay. That's not bad. No, that's, that's okay. But we'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Now, cons about uh, Shantoto is that she has different types of elements when darkness and holy she can imperil them but be careful with with units that absorb said elements all right friends if not you will be locked out of either or of said abilities and no you can't skip her ld if you're asking if you should skip her ld i mean unless if you're going to be using her you can't skip out her ld all right how about that let's let's phrase it that that way if you're going to be using her if you like her if you're going to be using her you can't skip out her ld plain and simple. All right, friends, now we're at that part of the video. Are they worth it? Are these units worth your hard earned tickets and or gems? Unless you spent it already, but are they worth it? Tickets. Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, if your name is 40, the Broadway saying Shantoto is absolutely pity worthy. Now, gem wise, uh, no, I wouldn't say this is a pity worthy banner but that is my opinion 40 please don't hate me now i'm saying t ticket wise try to get her ld if possible where, where it's at uh, is where you're gonna hear a lot of content creators say going forward you're gonna hear me saying going forward is that ld is where a lot of the power is at unless unless you're lightning and just being able to inflict 100% AoE paralysis. Again, she's going to be useful in, in at least two Lufenias that come off the top of my head later down the line. So she will have some form of longevity there. You can bring her on content. She can imperil every form of element in the game. But a lot of units coming our way, they, they will be able to imperil their own element. So if they can do that, 
There's really not a lot of use for Shantoto unless said unit can't uh, imperil their own element. So it, it, if that's the case, just Heraldi, yes, her burst effect does increase more elemental damage, but I really don't I really don't value that compared to other bursts on the horizon that I would rather you guys chase after. I mean, if you guys happen to get it off of the tickets, amazing, awesome, congratulations, congratulations. RNG is on your side. You just used up your lottery luck, all right? But I would just say her LD is where it's at. That's where you want to stick to, okay? Now, Alice say she she is she's really fun to use. Again, if you have your PhD and you, you are you like complicated kits, you're gonna have a lot of fun with her. Her being able to imperil in, in all of her elements is gonna help her out dish out just that much more damage. Uh, she does do magic damage. She she's she's a hybrid. She does have melee in there, but I again um she she's she's okay. She's really fun to use. Longevity longevity wise, I don't see it there. So that's why I'm trying to say stick to tickets on this banner. Now we do have Iko, we do have Porum, we do have Cryo, and we do have Lulu, the second banner that really focuses on elemental and parallelers, you know, Cryo with Thunder and Lulu with Fire. Porum, she is there for the HP damage reduction, for the healing. Aiko can imperil her own element. This is this is quite the heavy elemental and parallel banners, except for Porum, she can't imperil anything. So if you were, if you happen to have Shantota's EX already, and if you don't, not a fan of complicated kits, go for the second banner. Go because if you don't have Porum, she's gonna help you stay alive because of the HP damage reduction by 80%. That's that's really big. But if you don't have Shantota's EX weapon, then go for the first banner. Go for the one with Echo and LSA. And if you happen to pick up LSA, have some fun with that. But at the end of the day, friends, in my opinion, the this. But these banners are, are not pity worthy. Just use your tickets, at least 200 tickets. Try to get Herald D. That way you can attempt to do the challenge stages on the horizon to try to earn yourselves a burst token. Don't stress yourselves if you guys can't do the burst challenges, but if you if you pick up Herald D, that's one less synergy character you have to worry about. So again, friends, tickets, yes, 40 the Broadway saying pity worthy. Your own personal gems. I, I don't believe this span. These banners are pity worthy. Now, if you happen to want to chase Shantoto's burst weapon, hey, buy up more power to you. And if you happen to pick up her LD weapon early, what is that the best banner to pick up Shantoto's uh, burst weapon on? In my own personal opinion, I'm going to say the Dash banner. Hear me out. So, Altamisia, she does get good with her LD weapon. Uh, she gets her full stacks of her, I, think, I believe it was Maleficent off the top of my head. Don't, don't. Hate me, but she gets her full stacks of her stacks of her buff so she can be at her fullest potential right off of the bat. But Altamisia does get an LD rerun with her burst weapon later down the line. But at the same time, during that time frame, Pinello gets her LD weapon also. So if you're gonna skip out on Altamisia, then chase Shantoto's burst weapon on the Dash banner. Because Dash, Dash has some magic and physical Brave damage reduction built into his kit. Dash has thunder and parallel and enhance built into his kit. He can HP heal with his LD. There's a small chance to paralyze. And he, and he also increases elemental weakness damage. So again, if you're going to chase for Ultimisia's LD later down the line, then pick up Shantota's burst weapon on Dash's banner. If not, if you want Ultimisia's LD now during her lost chapter and you want Pinel's LD, then I recommend chasing Shantota's burst and the Altamisia banner so you can pick up Altamisia's LD and then chase for Pinello's down the line during her LD, LD and you could get Altamisia's burst weapon there. There's really got to start playing this shit out, friends. You really got to start playing this out. Now, let's take a peek into the future to see where said units do happen to repeat later down the line. Alice says she does repeat during... There, there's the uh, Onion Knight... Uh, burst and LD debut, so on the second banner with Gao's LD, it does get repeated. This will be the second time we see Gao's LD weapon, and on there it's Gao, Saz, and LSA. Now, on this banner, Gao, he has Earth Resist down, and he counters everything with his LD ability. He, more counters built into his kit. Onion Knight, LD is not on here, okay? Keep that in mind, friends. His LD will be on a different banner, L long story short. 
His LD brings your allies' turns next to him, and it gives your allies a free ability use, except their LD ability. Onion Knight's Burst. This will raise either physical or magic attack by 30%, depending on which stance you are after using his burst, uh, uh, finish it burst. And this will also increase Brave Damage dealt by 50%. This will increase Stolen Brave Overflow Limit by 30%. Increase HP Damage dealt by 20% and Maximum Brave Damage Limit plus 20%. So this is, we're well into the, we're, we're passing the cap at this point. So if you're not interested in Shantoto at all, then I would say this is the banner to go in for LSA, so to say. Shantoto, she does get repeated, just her EX weapon and, and her 1535 CP weapon does get repeated and Camelonauts. Oh, Lost Chapter, I, if, if you've been following me, if you're in my stream, you guys know I could give, I could care less about Camelot, uh, his LD, free ability use on the following turn, Brave Refund, Brave Regent to the party, okay, sure, but you guys also see Lightning is on there, Lightning's Burst Weapon is on there, but we will talk about Lightning in a different video, as Lightning is super busted, so I do not recommend chasing Shantoto on this banner, I would recommend chasing Shantoto on the first banner that has her LD and EX weapon, and you could potentially pick up her burst. So she is synergy here. She's going to be very, very handy. You do not need Camelot to do his Lufenna. You don't need him at all. You, you don't need him. Shantoto will be the, the main unit. She'll be in the spotlight for that event. All right, friends. So if you're going to be chasing for Shantoto, do it when during the hair attacks. Do it when her LD and burst weapon debut that is it for this video friends i want to thank you guys for watching another are they worth it video be sure to let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about about these banners overall me personally i am going to be throwing 200 tickets on the lsa shantota ld and burst uh banner just going forward at least my plans is what i'm planning on doing is every single ld and burst debut banner i want to throw at least 200 tickets because if, if i can pick up said units ld weapon they're going to be synergy for the following you know two to three events and they're going to be synergy there and that gives me opens up the option to having another unit for said challenge stage if i can do them so 200 tickets if i get shantota's ld and burst weapons hey awesome amazing if not i'm not i'm not going to chase i really have half a mind maybe are right, like 75 percent chance that i want to max alice just because just reading all this, it she looks really fun to use. So I, I sometimes I like complicated kits if they're not too too complicated. So it, it I, I think I can handle it. So that's gonna be my plans for these banners. Alright friends, so again let me know down below in the comments. Your plans, are you guys gonna chase? Are you guys gonna pity? 40, of course is gonna pity. I'll be rooting for you, bro. And until next time, friends, good luck and have a good one.